Welcome my friends. This over here is the brand new Kingston KC3000 NVMe SSD. And this, as far as I know, is their first PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive. Now, how fast is it? Does it live up to the numbers over here? We're gonna find out. This comes in four different sizes. The highest is four terabytes inside, then there's two terabytes inside, which I have over here, then the one terabyte and the 512 gigabyte sizes. Now, I think it's important to mention that on the specs, the one terabyte and the 512 gigabyte are actually a little bit lower speeds than this one. So I think they don't quite reach the 7,000 megabytes per second speeds. The controller over there is the Fison E18 controller, which should be the same controller that's on the Seagate Fire Cruder drives and also Sabre and Rocket drives. So I'm expecting quite good performances over there. So this is the two terabyte version. On the top over here, we have an actual, this is not just a sticker. There's like a metal sticker. So it's also like heat dissipating this a bit better, cooling the memory chips and the controllers down. And it is double-sided. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there are chips on the other side as well. But it's not the same with the one terabyte and 512 gigabyte ones. So only the two terabyte and four terabyte I uh, think have the chips on two, on the bottom side as well. The most important specs for us as creators is the terabytes written. So how long can this SSD last? Let's say if we put it as our project drive and we're constantly running really high capacity files through it, like, you know, terabytes and terabytes of files, how long will it last? So all of these KC3000 SSDs from Kingston have the terabytes written rating of 800 times its capacity. So if it's a one terabyte model, it's 800. If it's two terabyte over here, it is 1,600 terabytes written rating over five years. So if we do the maths over here, then we can fill 43.8% of the drive's capacity every single day. So if it's a one terabyte drive, we can fill and empty it with 483 gigabytes of files and then delete them every single day for the next five years and this will be fine. Now, enough talking, let's put it into the system and then figure out how fast is it. So we have initialized the disk and doing the speed test now in there. And then looks like the read speeds are 6,572 megabytes per second. Not bad, not bad. That's, uh, that's quite a lot, but it's not as fast as 7,000 megabytes though. Let's check something else as well. Okay, write speed about 5,800 at first. Read speed 5,600. Write speed 5,800. 5.7. Blackmagic speed test always shows a little bit less than a crystal disk mark. That's still pretty amazing, right? Now I want to do another test. I have two PCI 4.0 NVMe drives inside there and they're both super, super fast. Let me show you how fast the other one is. It's called the Cardia Z440. It's pretty fast. As you can see, 4,800 megabytes per second still. And the write speed is 4,271 megabytes per second. So on the left over here, we have some very large project files. We're gonna pull them over to that SSD over there and then let's see how fast is this gonna transfer them. I can see that right now it's writing them about 1.8, 1.9 gigabytes per second from one drive to the other one. Now we know that this can read on the left one over here, this is the Cardia Z440. That can go around 4,200 megabytes per second or even four and a half gigabytes per second read speed. So it can read them from there, but then now, on this KC3000, for some reason, we're only writing about two gigabytes per second. Now, both of these actual write speeds are much better than uh, you know what we're seeing over here, but let's see if this speed is gonna be sustained or not. And now, I wanna do it exactly the same again. I'm gonna have them copy over again, so I'm gonna delete those files, 
and then I'm gonna copy these over again to see if it can sustain that speed or not. So 1.9 gigabytes per second, 1.7, 1.68 something gigabytes per second. Let's see. These are 500 or 450, 500 and gig gigabytes. Now it has gone through quite a lot of data at the moment and we can still see that it's writing on it about 1.7, 1.8 gigabytes per second. That's pretty good. Now the interesting thing is it's not writing them down as like, you know, four gigabytes per second, something like that. So that's interesting. Okay, so it completed the transfer now and if we look at the temperatures of the drive, it's actually very, very good. The controller and the uh, SSD draw drive is like about 40 50 degrees which is completely normal so it's getting heated down quite well over there now there's good heatsink on that card on there as well that I'm using uh, that comes with this um, motherboard so I have another uh, PCA 4.0 drive that is my operating drive that's the desktop over there and that is the Sabrent Rocket one terabyte um, NVMe drive and that's uh, you know 4.0 drive roughly about four or five thousand megabytes per second as well so I'm copying from the desktop desktop now to the KC3000 and we're still reaching about 1.8 gigabytes per second uh, write speed onto the drive so looks like the drive is doing fine I've transferred about one terabyte of files now to it and it's still transfers exactly the same speeds on it which is really really amazing so it's not like it's going to be fast at first and then drop down drops down so this is this is quite amazing now then what can we say about this nvme drive now if this was launched a good few years ago we'd all be impressed with these read and write speeds but because there is other very high read and write speeds drives out there this doesn't like kind of raise our eyebrows as much as it would have done a few years ago so the 6.5 gigabytes per second read speeds and about 6.9 gigabytes per second write speeds they're very very impressive but what's more impressive is the terabytes written spec for this drive it's rated 800 terabytes written right so what does it mean in terms of what's some of the other drives out there? Now, Sabrent Rocket drives are usually 700 terabytes written rated, but the Samsung and Western digital drives are 600 times rated. So that is quite a bit more. And for me as a creator, that is much more important spec than having an extra few hundred megabytes per second read or write speeds. So what does it translate to? So if you take the 980 Pro Samsung drive, for example, then each day you can write 330 gigabytes per second for the next five years. And then that's kind of the drive's life then. This drive though here, extra 100 gigabytes per day to write on this drive, which for me, that's a big thing. That's a very big thing. If I'm constantly, maybe one video that I can finish here is about 400 gigabytes in one file size. If we're doing a PC build or something like that, that comes from that camera. And then when I'm writing these on the SSD to edit the project, then that's it. The next day, next day, next day, to have high terabytes written rating for an SSD, that is a really good spec for me. Now, it certainly isn't the best terabytes written spec. For example, the Seagate Firecuda 530 um, SSD, NVMe SSD, is a little bit faster than this drive and also has 1,275 terabytes written, which is about 70% of the drive's capacity every single day for the next five years. But this one, I like this. I think this is a very good drive because we don't need the very top. We need just fast and high terabytes written. So I'm liking this a lot. So for example, if you're asking me whether you should go with the Samsung 980 Pro or this one, then I would go this as a creator because the 200 extra times terabytes written capacity that I can get from this drive it's worth it. So for the latest pricing, check out the links in the description below, or if you want to pick one of these out, check this out. I'm going to use this in a very interesting build soon, so stay tuned for that if you like to see that. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.